Somebody say it's a joyous night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Open your Bibles tonight to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Holy Spirit went on to write a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart. Go with me back to chapter 3, verse 1. Notice that the word of the Lord says to everything. Somebody say everything. everything. And he said to every purpose. Someone say every purpose. Every. See, God said to everything and every purpose, there is a time and there is a season. Now, times may come and times may go. Seasons may come and seasons may go. Let me rephrase that to you tonight. Times will come. Times will go. Seasons will come and seasons will go. Whether we like it or not, our life is filled with times and seasons. And the older we get, the more rapid those times and seasons come through our lives. Amen? But to every part of our life, there is a time and there is a purpose. There is a season that things are done and accomplished. Amen? Now, notice as the Holy Ghost went on to write through Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes that these times seem to be totally opposite of one another. There is a time when you plant, and there's a time when you harvest. There's a time when you love, and there's a time when you hate. You say, I don't think God ever hates. You want to bet? God absolutely hates the works of darkness. He has absolutely not one kind bone in his body for the works of darkness. Are you hearing me tonight? He said, there's a time when you weep and a time when you laugh. What we notice is those seasons and times are exactly opposite of one another. And how many of you realize they come when sometimes we're not expecting them? Amen. Now, the older you get, the more you realize that times and seasons come when you don't. Expect it. Amen. I mean, there isn't anybody here tonight that expected those first white hairs to come in your head. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot this is First Church of the Clairol. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You know what I'm saying? Times and seasons will come and they will go. 
and there will be changes. Summer is different from winter. Winter is different from summer. He said, well, gee, Pastor, that wasn't too hard for me to figure that out. <laughs> no, but the seasons of our life sometimes do just as much in a radical change, and sometimes we're not ready for it. Sometimes we want it to linger a little bit longer. Amen? Now, I want to add to this tonight, there is a time to come in and a time to go out. Amen? So there are times and seasons, and those times and seasons God has in His hand. What is the purpose of times and seasons in our life? The purpose of times and seasons is that the world be set in our heart. You see, if we just spend times and seasons accumulating wisdom, accumulating knowledge, accumulating accolades, we've wasted our times and seasons. The purpose of our times and our seasons is so that God may equip us, prepare us, fill us with the world in our heart that we may go out to the world. In John chapter 3, verse 16, the word of the Lord says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in them would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Four times in two verses, the Holy Ghost through the mouth of Jesus Christ said, The world is in the heart of God. And the whole reason and purpose that we come into a local church body is to be trained up, equipped, and prepared to bring the message of Jesus to the world. Amen. 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 Now, the majority of us will come into a local body, we'll stay in a local body, we'll be part of that local body, and we'll serve out of that local body the rest of our lives. Hello? Boy, this blows the charismatic theory all to thunder, doesn't it? Or the, I should have said the cruisomatic theory. Hello? God puts us in a body for a purpose. But he also brings some into a body that he may equip them, train them, prepare them for the sole purpose of someday sending them right back out of that body to do his work. Amen? such as it was with the Apostle Paul, who was first called Saul, saved on the road to Damascus. And after he was saved, Jesus took him to the desert, and for three years he personally taught him and trained him. The Bible says then that Saul, now named Paul, was sent back to Jerusalem by Jesus. And this is what Jesus said to him. What I have taught you, what I have trained you, go back and submit it to the church at Jerusalem and James the pastor. Now, I don't know which theologian's right and frankly don't really care. But he was back at that church anywhere from 8 to 11 years as part of that body, serving in that body with the vision of that house to get the job done. But one night in prayer meeting, the Holy Ghost said to the elders, Separate for me Paul and Barnabas to the work which I have called them. When they'd fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them out. Now they always came back to that church on a regular basis to report and to share and to submit their lives in ministry to what God was doing. But they spent the majority of their time traveling and going to other places to get the work of the ministry done. Amen? Now tonight, that's what we're here to do. Of several years ago, God brought Robert Gonzalez and his family to the King's Church. Pastor Robert had said, I'll never live in humble. Why would anybody in his right mind live in humble? In fact, he went on to say, you know, can anything good <laughs> come from humble? And shortly after that, he found himself moving his family to humble. And immediately, 
walked into the door of the king's church and God said, this is where you belong, this is where you to serve, this is where you to be a part of it. And so he and his family just began to hook up, began to be part of the vision and part of the house. And one of the interesting things that God did was God made him my interpreter. Now you don't appreciate the fullness of that because when he came to the king's church, he couldn't speak Spanish. <laughs> he had a Hispanic a family background. He had been around the Spanish language all of his life, but he really couldn't speak it. But we prayed, we believed God, knew what the Holy Ghost said, and he grasped Spanish under the anointing of the Holy Ghost real quick. <laughs> and so then I took him on the first out-of-the-country missions trip that he'd ever been on. Two weeks and nearly killed him. <laughs> Literally. We were threatened to be thrown in a state prison. They tried to kill us with a machete. We survived that only to get a severe attack of Montezuma's revenge on the way back from Oaxaca to Mexico City. And every few minutes we had to pull the Volkswagen over so Pastor Robert could talk to his friend Ralph. And I said to the Holy Ghost, I said, Holy Ghost, I'm not too sure about this because I don't think I'll ever be able to get this man on the mission field again. <laughs> the Holy Ghost assured me, said, I've set the world in his heart. He'll go back. Since then, we've made so many trips, I don't even know how many we've made. Gone in places where other people wouldn't go, done things where other people wouldn't do. And God has blessed. But God continued to grow and mature this man and the giftings, the callings, and the anointings that he had for him. And like Esther, he was preparing him for a time such as this. You see, Esther spent her whole life being prepared for a certain time that God needed to use her for her people. And so tonight... It is with great joy that we declare unto you and we begin to send this man and his family out to do what God has called him to do, declaring that he is prepared for a time such as this. There was a time when God brought he and his family into this body, and now there's a time when they are to go out of this body. Though this is home, this is the home church. The vision of this house is still in their heart, and what they go to do is part of the vision of this house. We are building a bridge through this man's ministry into other lives and other peoples and even other denominations, part of the vision of this house. And so I would say to you tonight, Pastor Robert, there is a time... And there is a purpose for everything and every season. And that is that God has put the world in your heart. And so tonight it is with great joy that we have received you and enjoyed you, but it is with great joy that we send you to those that God has prepared you for. I'd like for you, church, to turn with me tonight to 1 Timothy chapter 1 tonight. And I would like now to begin to minister particularly to Pastor Robert and his family. And you all can get the blessing from it. Amen. Paul wrote the books of 1 and 2 Timothy and Titus to his sons in the ministry. And I would declare to you that you are a son of this ministry. You always have been and you always will be a son of this ministry. What Paul wrote to him was to encourage Timothy 